So, um, thanks a lot for inviting me to talk here today. So, we'll talk in English. Um, okay. Uh, so, these are my conflicts of interest. Uh, so, the outline of the talk today uh, will be that I will talk about the clinical 3D printing that we do in Lund as a start. Uh, and then I will talk about AI in 3D printing and image segmentation. A bit also on why AI for 3D printing is difficult. Uh, and then finally, I will present some uh, things about our ongoing 3D printing AI projects. So, uh, clinical 3D printing in Lund uh, started about a year ago. Right now, we have about three to four uh, patient cases uh, per week, print about maybe 12 uh, models per week. Uh, one thing that we managed to do is that the ordering of printed models by the physician is in the same system that you can order like a CT or other imaging uh, exams. Currently the main applications that we have is in neurosurgery, maxi maxillofacial surgery, orthopedics, cardiovascular and hand surgery. Uh, I also brought uh, a lot of models that I will show here. If, if you're more interested, you can discuss and see what, what we're doing after the talk. Um, shortly, this is the equipment we have. So, uh, mainly FDM machines uh, and one SLA machine, the Form 3. Uh, we also have a printer that will be used for printing uh, implants. Um, so here are some orthopedic examples. So uh, to the left you have a foot uh, of a girl that was um, had her foot uh, um, smashed by a car uh, as an um, in infant, and now they're trying to uh, reproduce some, so gain some uh, mobility. So uh, this orthopedic uh, surgeon he typically gets three or four models from us for each case and then he sort of cuts them up and try different uh, cuts to increase the mobility. Uh, to the right we can see a patient with a, a sclerotic um, uh, vertebrae before surgery so to plan how to put uh, the straightening device. Uh, again another sclerosis case uh, to, the, uh, to the left. Uh, and here was the question was how to visualize the ribs that needed to, to be split before surgery. To write a uh, multi-sick girl with frequent dislocations and needed more anatomical understanding before uh, planning surgery. Uh, cardiovascular examples, uh, the main application is typically congenital heart disease. So Lund is one of the two centers in Sweden where we do congenital heart um, uh, in interventions, and this was a case with a complicated uh, double outlet right ventricle. Uh, we also print models for test of closure device for uh, HR appendix. Uh, we do some plastic surgery, but not much. But here was a man whose ear was partly bitten off, so we printed the normal ear, the mirrored ear, and then defect ear. Uh, hand surgery, here we are in, in the process of uh, creating tools for um, uh, cutting guides uh, to create the uh, uh, osteometry um, um, uh, so tools to, to, to really perform the surgery and so that you can just uh, cut according to the guide and then when you put it together, it will be exactly as you planned. So where uh, could AI help in 3D printing? Uh, it would really be nice to have much more automated image processing. Uh, that is typically one of the bottlenecks uh, in 3D printing that we see in the, in the clinical routine. That and the, the time for printing is the, the two limitations. Uh, I would say. So why is AI for 3D printing difficult? Um, uh, actually, um, one of the models is up there. So this is um, a case with congenital heart disease, uh, one that we had. And uh, what's 
why does this, this make the AI uh, complicated? Because this six month boy has uh, Cetus inversus, so that's the, the heart is on the wrong side of, of the, of the, in the chest. There's a transposition, there's pulmonary atresia, there's hypoplastic left ventricle, and of course, for him to survive, there's a ventricle septal defect. And he has a BT shunt that was operated in at uh, a couple of hours of age. So um, this highlights that these patients are really unique. We might have um, 10 patients in Sweden that are born with uh, only one functional ventricle per year or something like that. So they're typically, 3D printing is really not for the bulk patients, it's for the, the, the really tricky patients. Uh, and those are, of course, of unique. But the thing is, you have a lot of diff, uh, unique patients from the, at the big hospital, but they are unique in different senses. So we have really a big lack of training um, models because every patient is unique, so it's hard to train networks um, for general, uh, for like understanding anatomy, for instance, is really, really difficult. Uh, another example was that I had uh, one of the cases uh, I have brought me with also, where the surgeon discussed with me and I asked him, where is the septum? And he, the surgeon says, I'm not really sure, uh, because septum is a really major part of the, of the ventricles, but when the surgeon is not so sure where the septum is, then it's a difficult case. So where could AI help in 3D printing? Um, we need to choose applications wisely. So one of the applications that we are working in is cranioplasty. So uh, here are two uh, examples of that. So cranioplasty is the repair uh, of a skull defect after a previous surgery or trauma. Um, so, <clears throat> and here we could use uh, 3D printing uh, to create uh, a mold. Oh, um, so to the left we have the, the skull. Uh, and then we uh, create an inside uh, of basically where the, the brain would have been. Uh, and then we cut it and we get the, the, the mold to the right. Because the clinical routine uh, for uh, fixing these, um, uh, or doing the cranioplasty when there's no autologous bone, the patient's own bone available, is that the patient uh, on the patient puts a uh, wet cloth uh, and then bone cement and let that harden and then arrange it so it fits uh, during surgery. But now with this mold, we can do this uh, beside the patient uh, in, in a much more controlled way and also get better precision. So here, here, here an example uh, of one of the first cases we did. Uh, the first cases, we could not uh, autoclave the mold, but we can do that now. Um, so this is a clinical routine in Lund since January this year. Uh, the advent advantageous is higher precision, better aesthetic result, because we can really plan uh, how we want the shape to be. Uh, it gives us shorter surgery time, because one of the surgeons can create a mold, uh, while the other um, um, what's the English name, um, like opens the patient uh, to prepare for the surgery. Uh, most importantly, there's no need, need to grind the molded uh, implant because beco before, uh, often they didn't really fit uh, after they created them, so they were grinding them. <clears throat> and these um, bone cement that they use is uh, added, you have added um, um, into that. So if we grind this, it spreads all of the operating feature, uh, which is not good for, for, um, for the staff. So probably what the ones that's most happy is not the surgeons, it's actually the, the operating nurses. <clears throat> so here's the challenge uh, where, where we need the AI. So uh, to create the inner surface, we, we typically use mirroring or, or just sort of cadding. Um, but this does not work for bilateral defects. So here's an example of a big uh, cyst that was removed 
uh, and then the, the resulting wound was bilateral. For this case, we also used uh, neurosurgical navigation, so we actually planned the whole surgery uh, and then um, could prepare exactly where the surgeon was going to cut uh, and then could have a mold ready uh, during surgery. So um, what we did was we trained a network on 250 normal skulls, uh, which is about uh, 60,000 slices from clinical routine. For each of the slides, we presented to the network, we removed different sections uh, that was hidden to the network that it should predict. And then we trained this. So here uh, is an example to the left of a preliminary result uh, of an actual sort of reconstruction of the, um, uh, of the shape that we can use in our system to design our uh, molds. Um, we have in Lund a, um, a 3D printer that prints in a material called polyether ether ketone. This has been used for implants printing, uh, for implants during the last 20 years, but now it's possible to uh, have printers at the hospital that can do this. So we're working on regulatory approvals to not create molds, but actually create the implants, um, which is something we're really excited about working on. Uh, another ongoing example is automated bone segmentation. So these are bones in the hands that you see, and the, the upper are the th thumbs. So you might think that bone segmentation is quite easy on CT. Um, yes, for visualization purposes, it's typically quite easy. Um, but typically when you want to do 3D printing, you want the, the bones to be filled. Uh, and this is not uh, super straightforward, and also avoid all these small defects. So really good bone segmentation uh, is something that is needed and would be advantageous to, to have. So we are currently in the process of really training this network and see what we can achieve. Um, some acknowledgements. So uh, in Lund, there's two guys doing the most of printing. So it's Philip and Eric. And then the uh, machine learning was done by uh, master students that are uh, ongoing projects. And then I would like to acknowledge the whole Kodak MR group that I belong to, so quite big research um, group, and the funding organizations that support our work. So, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Heiberg. Um, are there any questions? We're going to do this in English for obvious reasons, but any questions about the talk, we have a couple of minutes, so. Two. I have one question. Uh, you showed with the neurosurgeons doing the skull or with the breast implants. How much time do you need to do the printing? Um, because you mentioned that they can do it during the surgery. Okay, no, no, so, so um, we could, uh, so, so printing one of these molds takes about um, eight hours or so, so this is not, not, not during surgery, but we could have prepared the mold before because we were planning exactly how they were going to do the resection of, of the skull bone, so that's why. Um, so uh, what we do, did was what we imported the planned um, basically the planned implant. We imported that into the neurosurgery uh, navigation system, and then the, the surgeon can really see exactly, this is how we plan the mold, and then we can do it. Uh, so typically, we have had cases where they call us and say, on, the, on Friday, and say, we want the, a mold ready for Monday, and that's sort of pushing it, but more than that, uh, it's, it's quite hard. Ali, mia erotisi, an Να προχωρήσουμε στην επόμενη. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ για. Thank you very much.